Fresh anti-coup protests have been held in several parts of Myanmar despite an increasingly brutal crackdown by the military. At least seven protesters have reportedly been killed after security forces attacked marchers in several regions, including the commercial hub of Yangon. Protesters were calling for the return of civilian rule and the release of detained officials, including de facto leader Aung San Suu Kyi. The Southeast Asian nation has been in turmoil since the military overthrew the government over allegations of voter fraud in the last parliamentary elections. Nearly 70 protesters have been killed and 1,900 others have been arrested since the coup. Amnesty International has condemned the crackdown on protests. The rights group accuses the army of using lethal force, saying many of the killings amounted to extrajudicial executions. Well, to offer us more insight on that story, we're joined by Deputy uh, Asia Director of Human Rights Watch, Mr. Phil Robertson, who's joining us now from Bangkok. Mr. Robertson, welcome to the program. Uh, give us uh, your thoughts on the political turbulence uh, that's taking place in Myanmar, specifically uh, when we're looking at uh, the harsh crackdown against the protesters. Well, quite quite clearly the military forces, uh, both the army and also the police who operate under the army's control, are using uh, excessive force and they're using lethal force. They're, they're literally uh, using live ammunition to fire into crowds to try to break up protests of peaceful protesters. Uh, we have a number of cases where people have been shot in the head, uh, which is uh, evidence of uh, military snipers being involved in the, the efforts to try to break up these protests. Uh, it's truly brutal. Uh, it's completely violent. Uh, it is done with complete disregard for the human rights of the Myanmar people who have a right to uh, protest uh, a military coup that overturned a popularly elected government. So what are we looking uh, at right now in terms of uh, uh, going back to, uh, to civilian rule? Do you think that uh, the, uh, the army is in any place right now to, uh, to want to uh, let up uh, on, uh, on uh, the coup that we, we can call it a coup, the coup that's taken place. Yes. Uh, will there be elections soon? It, does the army have any intentions uh, to go back to civilian rule at all? I think that it's quite clear that the military wants to control power for quite a long time. Uh, remember that this is a country where the military had a dictatorship that controlled this uh, country for over 50 years. Uh, it is a, a military that is not listening to the international community. It is, it is only focused on controlling power. Um, it is uh, wantonly violating human rights. Uh, we've seen uh, absolutely thuggish behavior by the police uh, attacking people, uh, firing into people's houses, chasing protesters, destroying shops, uh, looting grocery stores. Uh, I mean, really, almost out of control. That. Uh, 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 you know, a police and military that are doing whatever they want um, to impose control and, and rule. And they're being met with fierce resistance by people who are, uh, you know, recognize that if they don't win this battle against the military and persuade them to go back to the barracks, uh, they could face a military dictatorship for a very long time. And no one wants to go back to that. This is the absolute nightmare of the Myanmar people. So the big question is, what is the international community going to do? Uh, you know, will we see the kind of targeted sanctions on top military leaders and also uh, the military companies uh, that are controlled um, by the, the the Myanmar military? The, there's two major business conglomerates uh, that control much of the economy, and and these are vulnerable to international pressure. But we're just not seeing it yet. You mentioned the international community, Mr. Robertson. Uh, in your opinion, what should it do? Do you think it's already uh, uh, been uh, been too slow in its response to, to what's taking place in Myanmar right now? It's quite clearly been too slow, uh, although we did see uh, yesterday uh, a joint a statement that came out of uh, a pretty bitterly divided UN Security Council, uh, which stated very clearly that there had to be release of imprisoned leaders, uh, including Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, there has to be uh, action to restrain the for, uh, armed forces and to end the violence. Um, but, you know, you essentially have the U.S., the U.K., and France wanting to do much more, and China and Russia resisting action and wanting to look the other way uh, on what the military uh, is doing to the people of Myanmar. You know, and it's unclear that we're going to be able to get much more action beyond that. Uh, I think we may see individual uh, 
countries uh, take action, um, and we're waiting for the European Union to come out with a package of targeted sanctions on top military leaders and also those military companies that I mentioned, but uh, it still hasn't happened yet. What we'd like to see, frankly, is we'd like to see the UN Security Council uh, impose a global arms embargo to make sure that no one can sell arms or surveillance equipment or uh, crowd control equipment to the military police in Myanmar. Right. That would be a real big step forward. All right. Thanks a lot, uh, Mr. Phil Robertson, joining us from Bangkok.